What up, what up, what up? It is your girl, Raina Rea, or Raina Rayan. Whatever you prefer to call me, as long as you call me something. You dig? Of course you dig. Today's video is gonna be about how me learning how to romanticize living actually saved my life. Let's get into it. And I'll also be talking about the things that I have been doing as of lately that have just made a drastic difference in who I am and how I view the world. Also, I know you're probably like, damn, what is that you're wearing? It looks comfortable. It is. Uh, let me stand up real quick. You know, y'all can't, y'all can't see the whole thing because this will be in my next Shein haul. So be on the lookout for that. And when I do post that, I'll tag it up here or here or leave it in the description whatever so romanticizing your life i know that's kind of a newer term that people like to use main character energy whatever whatever but it's a very interesting thing to me and i really tapped into it to you know change my narrative this started to happen to me before the new year started and it was because i got sick and i had got really really sick and i remember that period right before i got really really sick i was just feeling like garbage uh, full disclosure, I was on antidepressants that weren't helping. I just felt like I wanted to all over again. And it was just a horrible feeling to to have, to feel like nothing in the world will make you feel better, that there's only one other option to relieve your pain. I'm not a person who believes in the concept of hurting myself. So it was just like, I just want this pain to be over. You know, it would be nice if I got a break. I was at that point ready to quit my job. I was tired of being around people. I just wanted to go into my house, but baby, I had rent to pay. So that's, that was just not gonna work. I was gonna quit because I had two weeks off because I got sick, sick with a, a flu. But I started to do these habits and this was in like December. I started working on these habits because I just felt like my, I was not in control of my life. My job was just running me wild and down and into the ground. It was destroying my sense of self. It was destroying my sense of power. Everything was just going down the drain for me until I started implementing these things. Now I started watching videos. I believe her name is Alexis. I'll throw her name somewhere screen so you know who i'm talking about i was just watching her videos and that was the first time that i have felt something positive in a very long time i don't know if it's just the the scenery the vibe the voice but everything about true girl is immaculate and it helped me a lot to be like okay maybe i can't get out of my funk favorite a favorite youtuber of mine that i've really just been watching and watching her grow is lynette atkins she also has a lot of content, I guess, like this as well with romanticizing your life and, you know, self-help, capitalism, all that good shit. you can find on her page. I'll link her down below too. I started to realize I was feeling, feeding myself bull shit. like social media. I was on TikTok. I was just feeling a void of feeling like garbage. So I realized my first thing that I needed to do again was to do a social media detox so to speak so i uh, even though it was super hard because i felt like and i wanted to turn to social media to have something else to think about and distract myself i put my phone down i i got off social media you know i might open my youtube up every now and then but my rule was it had to be educational in some sense or something that was positive to make me feel better and i realized that i started to level out with my emotions a little bit more because i i attribute the social media binging to a lot of the feelings of nothingness that I had of bad. And then I started to listen to music that made me feel like that Yes, it was ghetto music. Yes, whatever. I have a whole playlist um, that's called Bad 2022. Like Megan Thee Stallion, like predominantly it's a Megan Thee Stallion playlist because she makes me feel powerful. She makes me feel like I'm on top of the food chain, you know? And sometimes you need to feel that way. Even if you're not on top of the food chain, you need to listen to stuff that make you feel like that so that you can manifest that into your reality. And you start walking that, walking that way. You start talking that way. You start breathing that way. You start thinking that way. And then other people will start to view you that way. 2022 hit, I'm like, okay, okay. I'm, I'm in that So once I started to feel a little bit better is when I started to implement things. Like for example, and I keep looking over here because my list is over here. So I have about maybe 14 affirmations, typed it up and I printed it out, put it on my wall so I can see it, right? Also, I did a vision board. Um, I'll probably link that video somewhere over here that I, how I did my vision board and how my wall is behind me. 
and I didn't call them affirmations because whatever I put on that paper is an assumption for me because I like to I guess use the law of assumption rather than the law of attraction I don't want to attract it um, I assume it's mine so it's mine the next thing I did was I went to a crystal shop oh no crystal shop oh I know some of y'all right now are just screaming and rifting oh I'm so demonic get off my video if you gonna be doing all that this is not the video for you okay I think my crystals are pretty I went to this place called Soltopia and oh my god the vibe was immaculate you get to feel around see what crystals are for you which ones aren't some are really good for manifestation some are really good for healing hurt love and this is scientifically proven it's not just on some a spiritual level this is science science it's backed by science how can you argue with science I'm like wow I'm really putting in a lot of effort because those crystals were not cheap there were some cheap ones there, but then were the ones that my, was calling me. The ones that was calling me was the more expensive ones. So I got the, I also have a geode, a citrine geode. Another thing that I started doing more regularly is cleaning. I mean, cleaning up my house, like cleaning it daily, so to speak, instead of doing a mass cleaning up at the end of the week. Cause I realized I would dread it when I did it that way versus, oh, I'll make my bed when I get up in the morning or I'll wash the dishes every night. I load the dishwasher every night or I'll use a bowl, put it in the dishwasher type. Like I clean up as I go, keep the bathroom clean. I like snuggers, I put candles around. It just, and I don't put my, bring my phone into that equation or anything. I just do it quietly or I'll put music on in the background. It's a nice thing to do to move your body and also just to, I guess, keep your mind. Let your mind do its own thing without being guided in any one direction. Now, let me preface this by saying I don't do this every day. I started waking up earlier. And when I say earlier, I mean like before it's light outside, like before 8 a.m. I don't know what it is about that morning air. It, oh, it just hit different. When you're the only, the first person up in the house, when you're the first person up in general, like you're up, the early bird catches the worm and they weren't lying about that. It just is a piece when you wake up you can really take the day while the city and everybody is still asleep and that ties into the same thing like i take i wake up early in the morning and i put my phone on do not disturb because those few moments in the beginning of the day is so precious to me those are the don't call me don't text me don't talk to me until i've taken time to myself and i've eaten breakfast why are you giving the first year day to everybody else? That shows how important you view yourself if you're giving the first year day to everybody else. And now you're sitting here wondering why you're all grumpy and tired because you didn't gave all your energy on everybody else instead of pouring into yourself so you can prepare yourself to deal with other people. And when I tell you, I don't know, it just got me waking up smiling every morning. I have a whole morning routine. I come over here, wake up, I, uh, I don't know if you can see past these books, but got a candle going. I put on some instrumental. They're Neo Soul Beats. You can find them on YouTube and you can also find them on Spotify, Neo Soul Beats. Um, I put that on in the morning. I write about how I'm feeling for the day. I read my assumptions and I start my day. I make my breakfast in the morning. I make something nice that's gonna taste good and actually fill me up so I'm not hungry in an hour. <laughs> Wake up early, give yourself the first of the day and the last of your day. You shouldn't be on the phone. Well, I can't say that. <laughs> you shouldn't be giving the very last of your day to somebody else either. I also started back working again in the sense of romanticizing my life. I need to have income to <laughs> supply the life that I want. There, I'm not gonna be, if I'm broke and jobless, I'm not gonna be out here waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning and eating food and lighting candles i can't afford candles no more i can't afford to eat so i took my ass to work <laughs> i went back with a much better attitude and i started watching the people and my co-workers who i allowed myself to be exposed to stop talking so much at work i stopped sharing energy with people at work so much they complain honey they complain oh i'm not doing this i'm not getting this i'm not making money i'm not doing that and it's so easy to fall into the temptation because it's like girl saying but it's like oh mm -mm. We're romanticizing our life. And as the main character, you don't talk about how broke you are. You don't talk about how many hours you get or don't get. You're the protagonist. You speak yourself up. Oh, 
okay, you ain't making money, that's sad for you. But I'm finna make some money before I leave here. Or I'm having a great day. I can't speak for y'all. Or that if the day is not going great, it's turning around. I'm not saying don't feel your negative. Feel your negative, but I'm saying don't hang around a bunch of negative Nancys. That shit gets tiring and it just sounds gross. You don't wanna be that person. I start getting up, up and getting dressed. Like you see the fit? Okay, maybe you don't see the fit, but I start waking up and putting on stuff that make me feel good. Stuff that make me smell good. Earrings, jewelry, get my nails. Okay, I didn't get my nails done. I did my nails. You know, put your hair on, scoop de doop the sides. Look good. When you look good, you feel good. When you feel good and you look good, you do good. Now, I don't do it every day. That's unrealistic for me. I don't know if it's realistic for y'all, but I start wearing, getting up and start wearing cuter things. When I go out, I make sure I look good. I don't have to worry about bumping into somebody at the grocery store that wouldn't even recognize me if i went outside look like a bump if i run into anybody they could be like damn you look great you have a glow and i'm like <laughs> i put in the i put in the work i have a bathing slash showering cleaning my ass ritual and this isn't something i do every day this particular ritual like obviously you get in the shower you wash your ass you get clean you put some lotion on and if you don't put on lotion what is wrong with you you like the feeling of um rubbing your elbows together and starting a fire gotcha so what i'll do is i have a silk robe i have a silk robe i put the silk robe on and i have these slippers that feel so good on my feet so i put on these slippers I'm not, I'm not gonna go too much into detail. I have a color change in light. I bring it in the bathroom. I have my smell goods ready. I have a nice hot steamy shower. I bring my music. I really, it's a party. I shave up good. I don't really grow a lot of hair on like my arms and legs. I've never actually shaved my arms and legs, but like, you know, everywhere else that grows hair, I get rid of the hair and I make sure I feel good getting out of the shower. I take the party into the bedroom. I do some journaling and I tap out and go to bed. So get you a nice shower ritual. Like on some, I need the bathroom on lock for at least an hour and a half. I don't care how y'all feel about it, bah. Reading books, oh my God, reading books has romanticized my life so much because it's allowed me to take in a lot of information and make me feel powerful and makes me feel more intelligent. I have a few books back here. And also this is adult stuff. So I don't know, reading certain books romanticizes my life for me to learn more about my body as a woman and the power that I hold and also just stuff in general. So this book is from Lou Paget. It could be Paget, pa Paget, or Paget, Lou Paget, and it's called Read the Book. This one is How to Stop Wearing and Start Living, and this is from Dale Carnegie. This one is from Robert Greene. It is The 48 Laws of Power. I don't know if y'all have heard of this book, but get it. I feel like for me, this isn't a book for me to use to be manipulative. It's just for me to be able to look out for me being manipulated because I absolutely hate the idea of being played. And then this one, I talked about this one in a previous video. <laughs> This is from Regina Thomas How Thomas Howard. And this book, I don't know, it just it just woke something up in me that like woke something up in me like wow. She is really power. Ah, stick it to the man, you know? But I've been reading a lot of books that help me feel better about myself, help me realize the potential and power that I have. And that just yeah. But I have one more thing that I like to do and I've been working on, and that is shadow work and self-love prompts literally from this website i'll drop that down below too where i have literally prompts that are that help me work on my shadow self and also self-love i'll do the self-love in the morning and i'll do the shadow prompts at night before i go to bed and i'm gonna do this every night but i might do this for like a week or so out of the month just to help me reflect and keep growing on myself and working on my inner child and a lot of pain that i've not worked through or just help me figure out who the fuck I am. Like, why do I get so mad when people ask me for my cookies? Not my cookie, but like, literally like somebody wants to have some of my food. Why do I get so angry when people ask me? Oh yeah, it's because that one time when I was a child, um, I was bullied into giving all of my cookies away every day for like a year. You know, just some like that. Hold on, let me show you the two books that I use. For my shadow work, this is the notebook that I use self-love i have this notebook 
I forget who. Let me see if it's still in here. I don't know. It's from, I think, Thomas and Coco, I think, is who made it. But this black owned, y'all. If I can find the link, I bought this in Target. I, no, I didn't buy this in Target. I bought this in TJ Maxx. If I can find the link for this, I'm going to drop it down below. It's black owned, so I want y'all to go support them. I'm not saying nobody else don't deserve no support because y'all take some shit and run with it. But I'm I'm black, so I want to support black owned things. So this is a black and beautiful black and beautiful notebook. And I don't know. It just makes me feel good. The inside is purple. And it's just so cute, you know? Yeah, those are the things that I've started to implement, and they've literally just made me a different person. I don't think that I've really went a whole consecutive day without smiling because I've implemented these things and they just make me feel so good. And I know y'all like, that's it. Uh yeah. That's it. It's the little things that I think we don't take advantage of or also we don't really think about that really changes the course of our, our day, the course of our life. When you start to implement little things, those little things add up and become bigger. Like for example, when you're overeating a little bit, just a little bit every day, that adds up. And now you're wondering why you're 40 pounds heavier than you were a year ago. It sneaks up on you, so you have to watch it. You have to watch what you intake. You have to watch what you allow yourself to be exposed to. And I think with romanticizing my life and making myself the main character, it really drew out what I was putting my effort and time into and what I needed to stop doing so that I can be the person that I have envisioned myself to be or who I really want to be. That's it for this video. If you have been romanticizing your life in the last couple of years, please let me know what you do down below because I want to try some more stuff out. This has been great, but you know, sometimes you want to spice it up. So if you have any, I guess, book recommendations or anything, drop it down below. Bye. Oh, wait, hold on. I almost forgot. I got a question for y'all. Who gonna pop me? Who is going to pop me? <gasps> That's right. No freaking body. Have a good night, y'all. Bye.